Hey guys, my name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel and today I'm gonna be filming another if you like this book I think you should check out this movie or this TV show And this is one of my favorite videos that I make on this channel because I am not only a huge lover of books but I'm also a huge lover of movies and TV shows and I love when I read or I watch different plots that just kind of feel similar in vibes to me and I love finding those similarities between things and thinking you know if you really enjoyed this book you'd probably also want to know about this TV show or movie and so it's just one of my favorite way of recommending you books and movies and TV shows but before we do jump into today's video I wanted to say a huge Huge thank you to today's sponsor, which is a new sponsor on this channel because it's fabulous, which is the number one self-care app to help you build better habits and help you achieve your goals. The Fabulous app is basically like this digital coach that will use behavioral science to kind of help you develop the habits that will give you the lifestyle that you want. And there's a community of 30 million users on this platform that will make it easy for you to build healthy habits and stick to them. I'm definitely the kind of person who really appreciates routine and structure in my day and this app has already been so helpful to me to remind me to do things like stretching and going on a walk. I really like that it's 100% personalized and that there are two different approaches to this because there's a self-guided one that's for habit building tracking as well as a guided approach with dedicated programs that are designed specifically to help you achieve your well-being goals. It's basically like having a coach in your pocket at all times but I really like that with this app you can go at your own pace which is very nice. Unlike other self-development apps it's more gentle and more rewarding and offers more support instead of pressure because I know that can easily lead to frustration when you feel like you can't keep up with your goals, but I like that this has a much more gentle approach to things. So the two approaches include habit tracking where you can pick from over a hundred different recommended habits or you can create your own, or you can do like a dedicated program, which is where you're going to be immersing yourself into something for weeks at a time and help you accomplish your goals. And I've personally really enjoyed the habit tracking approach because I like that it'll send me, you know, a few alerts a day reminding me to do things like drink water because I can easily get distracted by like my everyday tasks that I'm trying to get done. I also noticed that they have a bunch of cool different challenges that you can do so you can sign up for like a week-long challenge and I'm really interested in doing the seven day one minute stretch challenge. Start building your ideal daily routine. The first 100 people to click the link in my description will get 25% off a fabulous subscription and thank you so much once again to Fabulous for sponsoring today's video and now let's get into the book. I want to apologize in advance that I don't have the physical books with me here because currently I am dealing with moving. This is probably actually the last video that you're going to be seeing in this apartment because all of my books are gone. They're already at the house. So I apologize. I'll be putting photos on the screen though for all the books that I'm talking about. So the first one is going to be if you enjoyed the books It Ends With Us or Reminders of Him by Colleen Hoover. I feel like you should check out the TV show Made that's on Netflix and I feel like this TV show reminded me in particular of these two very specific books because in the TV show Made, we're following this woman who's just kind of stuck in this hard place because she's in this abusive relationship that she doesn't know how to get out of. She has this young daughter that she really wants to take care of and be able to provide for. And so we kind of follow her on this journey as she's trying to leave her boyfriend and also start a life providing for herself and her daughter. And it's about how she gets this job as a maid and how that's just kind of how she gets her start. And it's a really emotional, really beautiful, beautiful, well done TV show. And I feel like it reminds me of these two books in particular because of the themes of abuse and like abusive relationships and how difficult they can be to get out of. I definitely think it's similar to It Ends With Us in that way. Like it was definitely giving me the same feeling of like fear and like just how toxic those relationships can be. Like it's really hard to read about and really hard to watch, but it's also very informative about those kind of relationships. But then it also kind of reminded me of reminders of him in a way because of the whole story with like her being with her daughter and wanting to be with her daughter. Because if you didn't know, reminders of him is this book that's about this young mother who is trying to have a relationship with her young daughter. I feel like her daughter's also around the same age as the little girl in this show. So it also just kind of gave me those vibes. And I feel like both of these stories in particular also deal with like, you know, the struggles of motherhood and especially the struggles of being a very 
young mother. I feel like it's both very present in both of these stories. So I feel like if you enjoyed either Colleen Hoover book, I do think you would enjoy the TV show Made. The next one is going to be if you enjoyed the book False Witness by Karen Slaughter. I think you should definitely check out the TV show The People vs. O.J. Simpson because these gave me such similar vibes. The People vs. O.J. Simpson is like one of my favorite TV shows of all time because of the way they handle like the courtroom scenes and the way it's like interwoven within the story. I just think it's so well done. And in False Witness, it just gave me very similar vibes to like the style of the show, The People vs. O.J. Simpson. It just had a very similar style to the storytelling aspects of it. I feel like something that this book and this TV show really have in common is this, you know, running theme about how rich people can get away with anything. And if you have a lot of money, you can get out of things like murder and other kinds of things like that because both of these stories just really have those kind of vibes in it. I wrote down this quote that was from False Witness when they said, you'd rather be rich and guilty than innocent and poor. And I was like, oh my God, the way that that perfectly describes like both of these stories, I think is just so crazy. But yeah, I do think False Witness is a really great book. And if you enjoyed that, I highly recommend checking out The People vs. O.J. Simpson because that is one of my favorite TV shows. I think the TV show is superior if we're going to compare it to the book, but both of these stories are really great. The next one is going to be if you liked the book The Wedding Ringer, then I would recommend checking out the movie I Love You Man. And this is mostly just if you enjoy the idea, like the concept in this book. Because if you didn't know The Wedding Ringer, we're basically following this young woman who's getting married married and she realizes that she doesn't really have any friends like that can be her maid of honor or like her, her bridesmaids you know so she goes up to this woman who's like a stranger in a coffee shop and she's like hey can you pretend to be my best friend in my wedding and like be my maid of honor and it's just like the cutest friendship that grows out of this in this story and i think the main thing that's different about these is that the wedding ringer is more of like a romance story you know and unfortunately it's not a romance between the two girls which i personally would have preferred but uh there's like a really cute genuine friendship that forms in this book and I think that that's the thing that intrigued me the most about this book and so I think if you like this idea as a concept I think you should check out the movie I Love You Man because I Love You Man is also a very similar concept but it's more of a comedy instead of a romance but in this story we're following a character who's played by Paul Rudd and he realizes that he doesn't really have any close guy friends that he can use you know for his best man at his wedding and so he kind of meets this stranger and they become really close friends and it's kind of about like their friendship developing that and his friend is played by Jason Siegel who is just amazing like their friendship in this movie is just everything it's so funny genuinely one of my favorite comedy movies and so I just think if you liked the idea in the wedding ringer of like somebody just kind of meeting a stranger who's gonna play a big part in their wedding coming up then you might like I love you man like they're very similar in vibes of course in the wedding ringer we have a female friendship happening and then in I love you man we have a male male friendship happening but they're both just like really great stories I really enjoyed both of them the next one is going to be if you liked the book reckless girls by Rachel Hawkins. I think you might like the TV show The White Lotus and this is mainly because of the vibes, you know, like I'm a big vibes person and in Reckless Girls we're following, you know, this group of people who go out to this island that's like this you know, island that has all of these like secrets and like mysteries about this island. They go out there and then it's kind of about them being on this island for like an extended period of time and kind of like the chaos that comes with like all of their secrets in their group. And there's all kinds of things going on in Reckless Girls, but I think if you enjoyed the kind of like island tropical vibes with also a dash of like, you know, rich people murder vibes, then I do think you might like the TV show The White Lotus as well because The White Lotus is just like a really entertaining as fuck TV show where we're kind of following these rich people as they're on a vacation in Hawaii. I do believe they're in Hawaii. I think it's Hawaii. We just kind of get to follow their fucking crazy shenanigans as they're on these vacations. Like it's a lot of drama. It's not too much thrills up until like the end of the show kind of. But I just think if you liked, you know, the concept of following these like annoying rich people <laughs> when they're on like island tropical vibes and there's like a dash of murder involved. Um, I just, I feel like they give me similar vibes, you know? Like I will say I personally enjoyed the White Lotus 
a little bit more than Reckless Girls. Like, Reckless Girls was like a three out of five for me. It was just like a fun time, you know, but it wasn't anything super profound or anything. And then the White Lotus, it wasn't super profound either, but I found myself enjoying the characters a lot in the White Lotus. Like, the characters really made this show for me. Next up is if you enjoyed The Book of the Push, then I think you should check out the movie that's on Netflix called The Lost Daughter that's directed by my queen, Maggie Gyllenhaal. I feel like both of these stories are very similar in the sense that they're both kind of following mothers who don't really know if they want to be mothers. The Push is definitely more of a suspenseful story in a way. It's more of like a psychological drama thriller kind of story. But then The Lost Daughter is almost kind of more of a, you know, contemporary realistic look at these kinds of things. It's not so much a thrilling story. It's more like slice of life kind of contemporary kind of story. But they both have very similar themes in the fact that, you know, they both revolve around the challenges that motherhood can bring and especially when you never really knew if you wanted to be a mother in the first place. Both of these stories demonstrate some of my deepest fears about motherhood personally and what can happen when a woman becomes a mother who never really wanted to be a mother and I just feel like it's so rare to get these stories you know about women who are flawed and imperfect mothers you know because I feel like so often in movies or in books we see these mothers who are just like perfect mothers and like they've just always wanted to be mothers but I feel like now it seems like we're getting more stories about mothers who aren't perfect and who maybe never even knew if they wanted to be a mother in the first place and I think it also kind of shows how their relationships with their daughters is kind of difficult because of this feeling of like they never really wanted to be a mother in the first place and I just think the whole exploration of this topic in both of these stories is really well done. The Lost Daughter is a little bit more emotional I would say than The Push like the push is a little bit more of like a darker kind of psychological like thriller kind of vibe but then the lost daughter is more of like almost an emotional kind of beautiful look at a story like this and so I just think they're both great stories and they just really remind me a lot of each other because of those themes. I feel like it's just so rare to find characters like this in stories these days. The next recommendation is gonna be if you enjoyed the book The Arrangement by Kirsten Modglin, you know the one that's just like super freaking hyped right now, I think you might like the movie Deep Water. <laughs> like the recent one that just came out with Ben Affleck and Ana de Armas. These are both thrillers that have pretty much similar premises or like similar similar things are happening in these stories because in the book The Arrangement, you know, we're following this married couple who they decide so that they won't get divorced, they decide that they're gonna take one night of the week to kind of do whatever they want. Like they can go out, they can fuck other people. But then it turns into this thrilling story, you know, because of course something happens or something gets taken a little too far. So I think if you like the idea of the arrangement, I think you might like Deep Water as well because Deep Water is this movie where, you know, Ben Affleck, he's the husband and he allows Anna de Armas to like have other boyfriends and like sleep with other guys. But then it's kind of about how her boyfriends start getting like, they just start disappearing like mysteriously or like getting killed in suspicious ways. And it's almost like, is he killing them because he's like jealous or is it, you know, just a coincidence that these guys are dying? And it's just interesting because they both have this theme of like, they're allowed to sleep with other people and it causes some kind of thriller drama between them, you know? I personally thought these were both pretty average. Like, I personally gave both of them like around a three out of five stars. But I don't know, I just feel like if you enjoy the concept in one of them, you're probably gonna enjoy the other one too. All right, the next one is gonna be if you enjoyed the romance book Weather Girl, then I think you might like the movie Set It Up that's on Netflix. And the reason for this is because these are both romance stories and they have the very similar premise of, you know, the romance is between two coworkers who are trying to set up their bosses to make their lives easier. <laughs> I feel like Weather Girl was probably, you know, very inspired by Set It Up because Set It Up came out a number of years ago now. And I feel like I'm seeing this premise kind of more and more now these days where like coworkers are trying to set up their bosses. It's almost like a parent trap situation, you know? But I will say, I think I prefer Weather Girl out of these two just because Weather Girl, it's very cute and it also has a more, you know, diverse cast of characters. Like there's just more happening in Weather Girl that I cared about. I mean, because in the book Weather Girl, both of the leads in the book are both Jewish. We also have a fat single dad as, you know, the hero in the book. They also both work at a news station in Seattle. Like it's just a fun time, you know, it's really cute. 
I just had a really great time reading Weather Girl and so I feel like if you liked the idea of Set It Up or even like Parent Trap or anything like that, then I think you might like Weather Girl as well. <laughs> the next one is gonna be if you enjoyed the book Mickey 7, then I think you would like the movie Moon. And this is actually one that you guys reminded me of, like you guys gave me this idea because I recently just read Mickey 7 and then I got a million, like a full lot of comments that was like, have you seen the movie Moon? Oh my gosh, you would probably love Moon. And then I realized like how similar they are. And let me tell you, it's been years since I've watched Moon. Like it has been a number of years. So like my memory on it is not the best. Like I'll be the first to admit it's been a minute. But from what I do remember about the basic plot, like you guys are so correct. Like very much similar in vibes. I think if you enjoyed the premise and like the idea of Mickey 7, that you would probably really like Moon as well. And just to give you a basic premise, you know, in Mickey 7, we're following this guy named Mickey who signs up for this space mission where he's gonna be the one to like self-sacrifice himself if there's something dangerous or like if there's something where somebody needs to die in order to save the mission he's gonna be the one to do it because they clone him so then every time he dies this machine just like spits out a new Mickey and so we're following the seventh version of Mickey and the main thing though that's happening in the story is how Mickey 7 they think right at the start of this book they think that he dies because of something that happens and then he didn't die but when he goes back to the spaceship Mickey 8 is like already there and now there's like two versions of him and they're like what the fuck Mickey 7 doesn't take place on the moon at least not that I remember but it just takes place like in outer space and then of course the movie moon mostly takes place on the moon from what I remember but yeah moon was such an underrated movie like I never hear anybody talking about moon and you guys just reminded me of this movie when everybody was commenting in the freaking chat watch the movie moon I was like yes how could I forget I love moon so yeah I just think if you're a sci-fi person I think you should check out moon it's a good time and then the last one that I have on this list is if you liked The Paris Apartment by Lucy Folly, I think you should check out this Korean thriller on Netflix called Forgotten. This is so cool because this was actually a book troupe book club pick very recently and then Forgotten was a movie that I actually watched together with my Patreon for the first time like last month. And so it's crazy that I feel like these stories are actually kind of similar because, uh, well, first of all, they both have very, you know, creepy kind of like haunted house vibes to them, which I was not expecting from Forgotten, for sure. You know, in the Paris apartment, we're following this girl named Jess who, you know, her brother Ben goes missing. And when she goes to his apartment, he's not there. And then the apartment building is all kinds of weird, you know, it's kind of sketch. Like, it's almost like lock every door kind of vibes, you know, where it's like, is this building haunted? Or like, what's going on in this building? And then in Forgotten, you know, we're following this guy who is living in this new house with this family. Family. And then it's like this weird thing where his brother goes missing for a couple days But then when his brother returns his brother's like not acting like himself and it's very weird Like there's weird stuff with this house Like there's a few jump scares with this house that I like was not expecting and it was very scary when we were watching it on patreon together But I just feel like they're kind of similar like not only in the fact of like the brother going missing and like that being kind of part of the story too but also like just the atmosphere of like this creepy building and this creepy house and you can't trust anybody both of these stories have that in common where you're just like i cannot trust a single ass person in this story and i also feel like they both actually get surprisingly dark like they go places where you aren't really expecting them to go i will say i do think forgotten is the superior story out of these two like i think the pair Paris apartment is a really good time and I actually enjoyed that one a lot more than most people did I know because mo most people were really bored by this story but I do think forgotten is the superior story out of these two because forgotten oh my god the freaking twist at the end of this movie like are you kidding me this movie just goes places where you're like um excuse me what like I feel like I need to rewatch the whole thing just to fully grasp everything that happens in this movie and so yeah I don't know I just feel like they have very similar vibes you know brother gone missing creepy houses it's all there so yeah those are all of the book and movie TV show comparisons I have for you today. Let me know what your thoughts are on them and if you agree or disagree with anything on this list. And also let me know if you had to compare your like most recent read to a movie or TV show, what would you compare it to? Yeah, isn't it so sad that this is probably gonna be the last video that you're gonna see in this room? Everything's gone, like literally look at this. Like there is nothing on these bookshelves, like nothing nothing's going on. But yeah, thank you so much for watching as always, and I will see you very soon with another video. Bye!